I'm gonna show you one of my favorite shading hacks that you probably don't know exists in Blender. This can be super useful, especially on these complex projects where your shading just goes crazy. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So just for demonstration, I'm gonna take a plane here and I'm gonna rotate it, maybe scale it so it's a little bit bigger and maybe just subdivide this once or twice just so I have a bit of geo to work with. And then I'm just gonna move this, maybe I'll even use proportional editing. And I'm also going to add a sub D modifier. I can press control one or control two. I'll add two levels of sub D to it and shade it smooth. And I'm just gonna kind of move these around and get like a bendable type of sheet, just kind of like an organic looking shape, a curvy shape, smooth shape, just to really demonstrate what this um, trick does. And I think this will be fine. We're gonna go ahead and apply that sub D modifier. And now we basically have this cool looking shape right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything. And let's say I wanted to cut in like a bunch of holes into this object. Now the easiest way to do that is to use hard ops, the circle tool. So we just go into edit mode with vertices selected, press Q and then go into hard ops circle. And actually before I do that, let me um, checker deselect everything just so it's like every other vertex and then I'm just going to deselect the outer ones right here so it's just these interior guys and then we'll add the circle just like that so now we kind of have this cool sheet with like these little holes cut into it right now the issue with this as you can already see is the shading is absolutely atrocious if I go and do a really shiny matte cap um, you can see it's already shaded smooth and the shading on this thing is just absolutely terrible. It's horrible. You can really see that and it's going to show up in your renders and things like that. Now there's actually two solutions to fix this. I'm going to show you both. So what I'm going to do real quick is just undo that. Now before you add in any sort of booleans or circles or cuts like that onto a smooth shape like this, what you want to do is you want to take the base shape and duplicate it. So what I'm gonna do here is duplicate this guy and I'm just gonna rename it to whatever this thing's called. And then I'll just underscore clean. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just naming it clean. So I know this is the clean copy, the one with good shading. And I could even add in a, another level of sub D if I wanted to. However, I wouldn't recommend it because if it's not perfectly matched, um, sometimes it won't work very well. So. Uh, I know you can kind of see some facet in there, but that's simply because we have cavity turned on. If I turn that off, you're going to see that goes away. So now that we, um, let's go ahead and hide this guy, the clean one. So now we basically have two copies. So we're going to hide the clean one. We're going to go back to this guy. I'm going to, again, check or deselect everything and remove the outer selection. And I'm going to go to circle and then delete. And just like you know, I showed you before, the shading is really, really bad here. Now this is where we can use a normal transfer. So check this out. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go into face mode and basically what you wanna do is you wanna select all the areas with bad shading. And in this situation, it's essentially the entire mesh. So we can just select everything here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to vertex groups, click on plus and then click on assign and this is basically just going to assign the whole thing, um, which is fine. And now what we need to do is we need to go to add modifier. We're going to go to data transfer. And in this case, we're just going to choose the vertex group. Uh, technically, we don't really need to do this because it's the entire thing. Um, so it's kind of redundant, but that's just for good practice because say you didn't have the holes over here, the shading would be clean. So the vertex group can really help to isolate where that data transfer is being applied. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to face corner data. I'm gonna change this over to projected face interpolated with custom normals, okay? And we also need to make sure we choose the source. Now the source here is gonna be our clean object, okay? Now what we need to do is we need to make sure auto smooth is enabled. We can right click and shade auto smooth and it might take a second to go away. And just like that guys, the shading is perfect. What's basically happening is since this shape 
perfectly matches the curvature of the nasty one, what it does is it transfers over the shading information from this guy over to this guy. And you can see if I turn this off and on, the shading's impeccable. There's absolutely no problems here. It's really a really powerful technique. Now, another solution for this is to use an actual texture. Um, if you're not too concerned, you know, with it being actual geometry and you can get away with just using a texture, I would definitely do that. And the way we would do that, let me go to this clean version just to kind of show you, is you could pick out a texture, you know, from the internet or wherever and just apply it to your model. Now, I'm going to be doing a shameless plug here because I'm super happy with this product that we just released and it's called Material Works. So if you want to pick it up, it's 97 bucks on our website. But what you can basically do here, if you want to use our add-on, use our add-on. If you want to find something different on the internet, go for it. But, you know, you could use an actual texture and with our add-on, we can actually apply that to the model. We're going to make sure this is set to procedural. And I can basically turn this alpha value down to zero. And instead of using actual geometry, as you can see, it's just a texture. So I can really get in here, scale this up, scale this down. And I can get these, you know, this sheet with this really cool texture on it, um, which is absolutely amazing. So, you know, there's two different solutions. One is with geometry and the other one here is using just a, um, you know, texturing solution kind of like this. So. Um, that's basically the two ways you can clean up the shading when those situations occur. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, it just kind of depends on what you're going for. If you're just going for a render, you might as well just use a texture like this. So again, this is the rendering solution with a texture. If we go back into solid mode, this would be the solution using our data transfer modifier. They're both super powerful. Choose whichever one you want to use depending on what you're trying to do. Hope it helps. And again, if you want to pick up material works, go ahead and head to the description. It should be in there. Super cool add-on, tons of customization. We sold nearly, I think, a thousand copies. So a lot of you guys have been enjoying the texturing uh, with that tool. So definitely pick it up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.